Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this relatively recent announcement coming from the scientists that measure how fast the Earth spins. And it turns out that apart from 2020 being a relatively challenging year for most of us, the Earth was also spinning just slightly faster the entire year. In other words, for the first time in history, the scientists might actually have to adjust the clocks around the planet and give it what's known as a negative leap second. But this topic needs to be discussed in a little bit more detail, starting with a quick reminder to also check out the previous video I made where I talk about the idea of quasars and specifically a quasar map and also how the scientists today use this very accurate map to actually establish locations on the planet. In other words, all of this once again connects to the idea of how we measure things here on Earth by using these extremely precise calculations of various objects out there. And you might also want to take a look at another video from the past about the atomic clocks and how we were recently able to create something extremely accurate, something that was not actually possible until relatively recently. And all of this of course connects to this extreme precision that we were able to achieve in the last few years, or actually more like in the last decade or so, where we can now measure the location of anything on the planet and the location of the planet itself, as well as measure the extremely precise time with absolutely extreme accuracy, something that is actually also essential for us because as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, this is literally what the satellites in space depend on, especially the GPS satellites rely on this precision for being able to locate themselves and for then sending this information to various uh, detectors here on Earth, which is actually exactly how your smartphone works when you enable the GPS mode. So all of this depends on these extremely precise calculations of hundreds of these quasars that have been located over the past few decades and their location in the night skies so that we can then use them to precisely estimate where we are located. But today we're talking about something a little bit different, about the idea of Earth spinning a little bit faster. And the reason I explain all of this to you just now is because the precision of knowing how fast the Earth spins actually once again depends on this quasar map, something that we refer to as the International Celestial Reference Frame. And I'm leaving the link for this in the description if you want to check out more about this. Now before we start using quasars though, we actually just use regular stars. And in order to establish this accuracy and know exactly where various stars in the night skies are located, several major projects have been launched over the past few decades, including the biggest one in the last two decades known as the Hipparchos, the satellite that was launched by the European Space Agency a few decades ago, whose main purpose was to essentially do a lot of astrometry, a lot of really precise measurements of the location, the speed and the distance to various stars, so we can then use them here on planet Earth for various extremely precise measurements. One such measurement is in trying to establish the total length of the year and the length of the day on planet Earth. For example, to measure the year, the scientists will usually use the star reference to try to establish when Earth passes in front of the exactly same spot in the solar system as it did the year before. And at the same time, something similar is done for measuring a single day on planet Earth. In other words, by using stars or actually quasars as a distant reference frame, the scientists can extremely precisely establish the exact length of a single day on planet Earth. And so essentially, as the planet spins and as the stars move above us, the scientists can use this as a reference frame to establish exactly how long it takes for Earth to spin once. Now normally you'd think that it doesn't change that much, but because of various motions of, for example, things inside the planet, because of the tidal effects from the moon, and also because of the atmospheric effects, here is kind of how the day length changed last year. From January 1st to December 16th, you can kind of see that the length of the day, especially right here in July, on July 19th, was actually about 1.46 milliseconds shorter than it has been in the past few decades. In other words, for some reason, and that's the reason we can't really explain right now, last year Earth experienced one of the shortest days ever. But obviously this is milliseconds shorter, it's not something that we as humans can feel easily. But satellites on the other hand, and by association all of the technology that depends on these satellites, would feel this and would actually be affected by it quite dramatically. And because of this and also because of all of the precision that we require for modern day technology, 
Back in 1972, the scientists introduced what's known as a leap second. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what a leap year is. Essentially, you know, every four years we have February 29th. That's because the astronomical year is not exactly the same as the calendar year. But leap second is something entirely different. And in the last uh, few decades, since 1972, 27 leap seconds have been added to the day calendar, or basically to the daytime, in order to counteract the very, very slight shifts or slowdowns in the rotation of our planet. And so basically in the last 50 years, the planet slowed down by about 27 seconds or so. But then for some reason in 2016, it kind of stopped slowing down. And once again, as you can see from this graph from timeanddate.com, it even reached the shortest day ever. And that's something that we really didn't expect. And obviously for now we have absolutely no explanation to any of this. I mean, naturally the first explanation here could be maybe this was due to some kind of a lockdown that was all over the place and maybe there was just not enough motion on the planet. But human activity by itself cannot explain this unusual phenomenon. It's more likely to do with something on the inside of the planet that sort of shifted and caused the planet to suddenly start spinning just slightly faster. Not fast enough for us to notice, but fast enough for satellites to notice. And because of this, for the first time ever, the scientists have even started thinking about taking away one of the seconds, or basically introducing a negative leap second. This will be the first time ever that this has been done, but because the scientists now expect 2021 to be relatively similar and the Earth to start spinning even slightly faster once again, 2021 could become the first year ever when the leap second is taken away, thus readjusting the time on Earth once again to help satellites synchronize with what's happening on the surface. But as you can imagine, these fluctuations are really difficult to predict, and for the most part we can still kind of safely say that the total day length on planet Earth is exactly 86,400 seconds. But once in a while it becomes one millisecond faster, and some other time it becomes one millisecond slower. And because our society has become so advanced and so complex in its interaction with planet Earth, and also because we do require these extremely precise calculations for a lot of modern technology, like the atomic clock that you see right here, that's the miniaturized version of a typical atomic clock, because of this we definitely need to keep track of these slight changes, which is something that scientists have been doing for the past few decades, and something that's been readjusted without anyone actually noticing. And in case you're wondering who's responsible for all of this, well, it's this organization right here, whose website you can find in the description. They were established back in 1988, and pretty much every year have been responsible for either adding or subtracting additional leap seconds from the atomic clocks around the world. And according to them, currently the atomic clocks around the planet are lagging by about 19 milliseconds. And though I'm sure most of us haven't noticed, the last time leap second was added was actually on the New Year's, January 1st of 2017. In other words, on December 31st at 235959, there was actually an extra second in there. So the countdown that we all kind of did during the New Year's Eve was not entirely accurate. It was accurate for symbolic reasons, it wasn't accurate for the astronomical timekeeping reasons. Now, if you want to learn more about leap seconds, I'm also leaving the link for this right here that kind of tells you more about this and also gives you a bit more detail about when we usually add leap seconds and of course why it's important to do so. But the interesting takeaway from all of this is that in the last uh, few years, in the last few decades, on average, one leap second has been added every one and a half years. So basically that's kind of how the Earth usually slows down. But the last year it didn't, it accelerated and it was spinning faster than ever before, with the shortest day being about 1.46 milliseconds shorter than usual. So I guess that's another reason for why 2020 was just a very strange and a very peculiar year. But if the days in 2021 are just as short as they were in 2020, we're gonna have to introduce a negative leap second. In other words, next year, the countdown might actually miss a second in there because one second will be taken away. And that's something that we've never done before, but also something that none of us will probably notice. So unless you're actually dealing with atomic locks, and unless you live in an extremely precise environment where every millisecond matters, all of this is sort of interesting from a scientific curiosity perspective, not really for practical reasons. But for anyone who relies on extremely precise time measurements, this is actually extremely important. And in that sense, I'm definitely going to come back and talk more about this once we discover whether the second is going to be added or taken away. 
But until then, and until we know more about what Earth is planning to do this year, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.